you doing in your life right now that requires faith? C.S. Lewis wrote these words. <clears throat> if you read history, you will find that the Christians who did the most for this present world were precisely those who thought the most of the next world. <clears throat> it's since Christians have largely ceased to think about the other world that they have become so ineffective in this one. As Christians, we are tied to the world to come. As Christians, we are tied to the love of God, and the reason God loves us is to take us to be with Him for all of eternity. And yet there are so many Christians, and this just blows me away, who, who come to worship on Sunday, and in their minds and in their hearts go, yep, I, I believe that God loves me, and then they walk out the door and then act like God doesn't exist the rest of their life. We should be consumed. We should become obsessed with the love of God. We should live our lives with an eternal perspective and it will change everything and the church will become vital in infecting the world with the love of God. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4-8, through 8, if you're confused on what love is, Check that out this afternoon. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, tells you exactly the characteristics of love. God, <clears throat> verse 17, I think, was written and spoken just in case you didn't hear verse 16, okay? <clears throat> verse 17 says, for God did not send His Son in the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Too many of us just kind of mouth these words and then we live our lives like God doesn't exist. Too many people in the church, I think, spend their time running around condemning the world rather than joining God in saving the world. Now I want to be clear on this. There is evil out there. There is bad out there. There are wrong things out there. And we as a church need to recognize and address those. But we need not spend all of our time, all of our energy, just condemning the world. That's not what Jesus came to do. Jesus came to save the world. And I don't know about you, but if somebody is going to try to get me into the kingdom, if somebody is going to reach out to me, if someone's going to do mission work on me, condemnation is not going to work. Condemnation is just going to make me harder in what I stand for. But love changes us. Love ministers to us. Which do you think it's easier to do? To condemn someone into the kingdom of God? Or to love them into the kingdom of God? Pretty easy answer. <clears throat> and our Lord, the star of the show, already set the example. I heard an Islamic convert said that his problem... <clears throat> wasn't with Jesus. He liked Jesus. His problem was the church who didn't reflect the love of Jesus that they talked about. So, the question now is, are you letting the love of God flow through you to other people that they may be drawn to uh, our Lord and Savior? Or are you getting in the way? Are you becoming a barrier for whatever reasons of allowing God's boundless love to flow through you. It's pretty challenging. Maybe even a little threatening. Been reading another, you're going to think all I'm doing is reading books, but I read another book. Kathy Hoime put us onto it in our Christian book club called The Same Kind of Different as Me. If you want to cry and just get all the tears out of your system, that book will do it. But it will also challenge you in your understanding of the love of God and that how that love has no limits and crosses all kinds of boundaries and barriers that we set up ourselves. 
The church needs to reflect the love of God. The church needs to reflect John 3, 16 and 17. So how do we get there? How in the world do we get there? We do it by spending time with the one who loves us. That sounds really profound, doesn't it? Just spending time with the ones who loves us. Now, I want to, those of you that are married, <clears throat> um, I want to ask you a question. At some point in your relationship, did you in your brain realize this other person loved you? Yes? At some point in the relationship, your brain said, okay, they love me, right? Now, cerebrally, you know they love you, right? So at that point, did you go, okay, good, I'm done. No longer spend time with them? <clears throat> I mean, you know it. You know it in your head, right? They love me. So you don't have to spend time with them anymore. Don't have to really talk to them anymore, right? If, if any of you went down that path, how's it working for you now? It wouldn't work at all, would it? It wouldn't work at all. Because love doesn't work that way. Love isn't just about cerebrally in your head knowing, yep, they love me. And, and yet so many Christians do that. Yep, yep, God loves me. Okay, that's fine. Now I can move on to my life. I know that God loves me, so I can move on. Well, what is that? That's not love. Love is a relationship. Love is where you spend time with the one who loves you. And so if you in your brain have reached the point of saying, yep, God loves me, then you know what? You need to spend time with the one that loves you. You need to spend time with the one you love. I'm going to challenge you. This week, I want you to spend time with God who loves you. And I mean some real intimate time. Some quality time. Where you just get away from the business of the world and you go and spend time. Praying. Listening. Reading God's Word. Maybe even, you know, <clears throat> buying books like Crazy Love and walking through this and examining your love relationship with God. We can't live our lives as Christians with any kind of joy with any kind of peace, with any kind of authenticity, if we just say, yep, I know that Jesus loves me because the Bible told me so. If we don't spend time in relationship with God to allow Him to love us and for us to be amazed at how boundless His love is for us, even though we're these little specks, these three-fifths of a second in the story, the movie of life. May God bless you this week. <clears throat> May God surround you with other Christians who can support you in, in this journey of love. And may God's Holy Spirit strengthen you in your loving relationship with your Lord who who loves you so much that he was willing to die to save you. That's a whole lot of love that can't be measured. In his holy and precious name, Amen.